bit error ratio or channel capacity. Which metric should I use when evaluating communication systems? This is a question that I've got many times on social media. In this video, I will provide you with my best answer. The question concerns two different performance metrics. The first one is the bit error ratio or BER. And you might have come across this if you study digital communications, where it is the most popular metric to consider. However, if you have looked into recent papers analyzing wireless communications performance, then the channel capacity, which comes from information theory, is very popular. So why is that? Why don't we also consider the bit error ratio in research? To break this down for you, let's take a closer look at each of the different metrics and their specific properties. The bit error ratio considers the transmission of a certain sequence of zeros and ones. So these are our bits. And then you receive a sequence of zeros and ones as well. And you compare the sequences and can determine how many errors that were occurring during these transmissions. How many zeros and ones that was flipped to the opposite mode? These errors can be caused by a number of different things. There will be noise in the receiver, there might be interference in the system, it might be also that you have encoded your signals in a suboptimal manner, which is making noise interference sensitivity larger, and it might also be that your receiver operation is not implemented in the most optimal way, but that is also causing additional errors when you try to reduce your computational complexity. So how do we compute the bit error ratio? Well, it is defined as taking the number of bit errors and divide with the total number of bits that you were transmitting. So this is the ratio that we consider. In this example, when we have two errors and we are transmitting 10 bits in total, well, then we have 0.2 or 20% as our bit error ratio. The BER abbreviation can also stand for bit error rate. And that is not formally correct because there is no really time dimension as you expect when you talk about rates of something happening, but it's used anonymously. It can also be called the bit error probability because if you're sending a large number of bits, well, then the percentage here is representing the probability of getting errors. So if you have a 1% bit error ratio, well, then you can expect that if you transmit 100 bits, you will get roughly one of them wrong. Let us now take a closer look at the channel capacity, also known as a data rate. So this is a number of bits that we can transfer per second without any errors. So it's zero BER. We can only compute this for a particular channel because the channel condition determines at what speed or rate that we can transmit bits without error. And it's defined when we are transmitting infinitely much data. So the zero errors is occurring when the number of data bits goes towards infinity. There is a classical formula for the channel capacity that Claude Shannon was deriving in his seminal work in information theory, and it is to take the bandwidth, which represents the number of symbols that we can transmit over a channel per second, and then the log 2 of 1 plus the signal to noise ratio. So this is a way of computing how many bits that we can transmit per symbol using our modulation without any errors. The whole thing is relying on some idealistic assumptions, such as transmitting infinite amounts of data, sending it with the ideal coding and modulation scheme. And there's a number of other things regarding how much complexity we need to spend on actually decoding the information. This is the ultimate limit. But is it relevant when evaluating practical systems? Let's take a look. So this is a simulation from the Massimima 10 Myth and One Critical Question paper. There is a link in the description if you would like to read the exact details. But the point here is that we are transmitting with a modulation scheme called 4QAM. We use a one half LDPC code. And I'm showing you here the bit error ratio compared to the signal to noise ratio per antenna. This is a multi-antenna system. The important thing is not the exact numbers here, 
but that there are four different curves. The first curve to consider is this straight line that comes from the channel capacity. So with this modulation scheme, we are transmitting at a particular data rate, number of bits per second. If you use the capacity formula, you can figure out what kind of signal to noise ratio you would need in order to deliver that. And this is this value here close to minus 14 dB. Then we are transmitting with this LDPC code with different code word length, a thousand bits. Then you see for different SNRs, you get different BERs. It goes down with increasing SNR. With 10,000 bits, you get this red curve. With 100,000 bits, you get this black curve. You can see that the point where the BER starts to fall down very rapidly towards zero moves closer and closer to the point the capacity formula is predicting. So when you're transmitting in a practical way with long blocks of data, well, then you will be able to predict what SNR you need with the capacity formula. A lot of data, what is that really? Well, 100,000 bits, if you say that is 100 kilobit, that is almost nothing in real life. So these are not really big numbers. The channel capacity formula tells you how many bits per second you can transmit without error if you send a lot of data, but it doesn't tell you how to achieve it. In practice, we use something called adaptive modulation encoding, which means that we predefine a particular number of speeds that you can transmit data at. And this is, for example, this table here from 5G with different modulation formats. So these are how many constellation points you have in your digital modulation. 4QAM, 16QAM, 64QAM, and 256QAM. And then you combine this with, for example, an LDPC code with different coding rates. And the combination of this leads to different bits per symbol. The connection to the channel capacity is the following. We compute the log 2 or 1 plus SNR for the channel that we're having. And this gives us a particular value. Then we start to compare this value with the bit per symbol that you can get with your different modulation encoding schemes that is supported in the system. The ones that have a lower number of bits per symbol, those ones you can achieve with a bit error ratio practically equal to zero. While if you are transmitting at a higher speed than what the capacity is saying, well, then you are in this range here and your bit error ratio will be roughly one half. So the main principle is that you compute your channel capacity, you look in the table for the closest smaller number of bits per symbol, and then you communicate using that option. In summary, my answer is that the channel capacity is the preferred performance metric in communication systems of the day. And there are three main reasons for that. One is that we are transmitting a lot of data, so we can use channel codes to take care of the errors. So the information theoretic limits are closely approached in practical systems. The second one is that when we are performing adaptive modulation and coding in practical systems, we are not getting a large bit error ratio. We are picking the modulation and coding to get the small one, and then we are achieving a data rate close to the capacity. The third point is that the capacity expressions are relatively neat and easy to understand. We started from the log 2 or 1 plus SNR formula, which is very simple, but even in more complicated scenarios, with multiple antennas at base stations serving multiple use at the same time using beam forming, we can get expressions for the capacity of the individual users that are fairly easy to understand, where you see how different parameters affect the performance. And then you can optimize those parameters, such as how you divide power between users and how you pick the directions in which you are transmitting. By contrast, the bit error ratio expressions are only simple if you neglect channel coding, which is not particularly interesting in practice. In practical scenarios, you will just have to run big simulations to compute the BER. And if you do that, you can just as well compute the block error probability with your actual modulation and coding scheme. That would be the end performance metric. But the capacity is a good approximation of for what data rates can you achieve a very small block error probability.